Qantas has long explored the viability of direct flights between Sydney and London. Known as Project Sunrise, the efforts to connect these cities would result in the undisputed longest flight in the world, lasting for about 20 hours and covering about 10,000 miles. This new flight would be about 1,000 miles longer than the current record holder of Newark to Singapore, which is operated by Singapore Airlines. Up to this point, Qantas has only evaluated these flights on paper. That's about to change though, as the airline has geared up to conduct a series of real-world research flights between these distant destinations. But because there isn't a commercial jet that can cover the distance non-stop, and because the physiological effects of such a long journey are relatively unknown, this flight will look very different than your typical long-haul journey. So what specifically is Qantas trying to learn from these flights? Let me explain. First, it's important to discuss how Qantas is going to make these flights possible. The flights will be operated by three brand new Boeing 787-9s, fresh off the 787 final assembly line in Everett, Washington. Rather than fly these jets directly to their home base in Sydney, Qantas will fly two of these jets to New York and one to London, from which the research flights will commence. The maximum range of a fully loaded 787-9 is about 9,200 miles. This is about 1,300 miles short of the trip between London and Sydney, and about 400 miles short of New York to Sydney. This presents Qantas a golden opportunity to test the efficacy of its brand new flight planning software known as Constellation. It's engineered to model thousands of potential flight paths in real time, taking into account weather, payload, and aircraft capability. Theoretically, this system will chart the most efficient path and reduce fuel burn by 2%. Boeing will also be testing its own real-time flight planning system called Flight Deck Advisor during these tests. But even if both flight planners charted the perfect route, it still wouldn't be enough to cover the extended distance. As such, Qantas is planning on restricting the number of people on board to just 40 individuals, which will help to save on weight. Of these 40 people, the majority will be comprised of pilots, cabin crew, and fatigue experts from both Boeing and Airbus. Qantas has stated that the primary objective of these test flights is to evaluate crew fatigue, as it has a direct implication on safety. The pilots will have to wear sensors to monitor vital signs and brainwave activity. Additionally, the fatigue experts will run them through simulated emergency scenarios deep into the flight to see how they respond. However, Qantas has also selected a few frequent flyer volunteers to participate in these flights. They will give Qantas the opportunity to monitor passenger comfort, activity, and behavior, in addition to trying out new aspects of their cabin service. Top of that list is a healthy new meal plan designed to keep passengers more hydrated and energized. Every single aspect of these flight tests will be highly scrutinized, and these tests must run smoothly for Qantas to greenlight the next phases of Project Sunrise. But in the event that everything does go according to plan, what happens next? Well, both Boeing and Airbus don't have planes with adequate range to offer Qantas. Currently, the best Boeing can offer that satisfies Qantas's 300 seat minimum requirement would be their upcoming 777-8, which has a range of 8,700 miles. Qantas can do a bit better with their A350 ULR, which boasts 9,700 miles of range. One of these aircraft manufacturers is going to have to offer an even longer range version of one of these two jets before London to Sydney flights can commence. And both aircraft manufacturers have already put forth proposals to Qantas executives. Which plane Qantas will ultimately pick is hard to predict. While they have 90 Boeing jets in their fleet to just 40 Airbus, only 15 of those 90 are used for long haul routes, while all 40 of their Airbus jets are wide bodies. Whichever jet Qantas picks, there is still no getting around the fact that for whoever is on board, it's going to be an extremely long journey either way. If you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.